Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Sky Warden ISR Strike Aircraft Introduced. Also, EAA International Young Eagles Day on June 12 continues inspirational effort. And a massive Chinese booster re-enters and misses populated areas. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest stories that you don't want to miss. A new aircraft has been built up out of what started life as an AT-802U, Sky Warden airframe. The job to take on airborne intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and other missions in extreme combat environments. Sky Warden is part of a partnership between L3 Harris Technologies and Air Tractor, and reportedly features the largest payload capacity of any single engine turboprop aircraft. The multi-mission platform provides the operator the capability to identify, track, and react to counter threats. It merges the capabilities of larger ISR and armed aircraft into one package. It is also capable of takeoff and landing on unimproved airstrips, allowing the aircraft to be deployed and co-located with special mission operators. Air tractor aircraft were developed precisely to operate in austere environments with limited infrastructure, said Jim Hirsch, president Air Tractor Inc. Our aircraft are built to offer unparalleled flexibility, essential ingredients for special mission operators. Sky Warden's name commemorates two multi-mission special operation combat platforms. It merges the deep history of the Vietnam era A1E Sky Raider with the present day U-28 which uses the call sign Warden during combat operations. More news after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other but still interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. In response to a GA coalition request, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention updated its guidance for pre-departure testing. The new CDC guidance permits results from certain COVID-19 home testing kits to be accepted for passengers entering the U.S. In a letter to the agency, the NATA, NBAA, and others stated the need for pre-flight COVID-19 testing protocols is becoming more critical as travel continues to increase worldwide. However, current international protocols are burdensome time-consuming, and have inherent limitations in processing large numbers of travelers. Premier Private Jets has acquired the Oakland Air FBO at Oakland County International Airport. The acquisition brings Premier's charter fleet to 14 and expands their capacities in the maintenance arena. The PTK facility will be rebranded Premier Jet Services. We are absolutely thrilled with this major acquisition, the first of many we anticipate happening as we expand Premier's footprint around the country, said Josh Birmingham, Chief Executive Officer of Premier Private Jets. 
Airbus has confirmed the passing of Bernard Ziegler at the age of 88. Ziegler, one of Airbus's engineering pioneers, was instrumental in the introduction of the world's first digital fly-by-wire and side-stick controls in a commercial passenger aircraft with the A320 in 1988. Ziegler's career spanned some four decades. He realized the full potential that digital FBW could bring, including flight envelope protection incorporated into the control software. Alpa accused the management of cargo jet and the union representing its pilots, Unifor, of attempting to weaken the newly developed Canadian flight duty and air safety requirements. In letters to CargoJet CEO A.J. Vermani and Unifor's national president Jerry Diaz, Alpa expressed concern over recent efforts to weaken the airline flight and duty time regulations, which they believe to be one of the most important aviation safety issues for flight crews in Canada. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. EAA's International Young Eagles Day, which focuses on flying thousands of kids as an introduction to aviation, returns on Saturday, June 12, at locations throughout North America. The return of the annual event comes as the COVID pandemic sidelined the all-volunteer effort in 2020. EAA chapters and members will fly kids ages 8 to 17 free of charge at local airports in their communities on that day. In activities that highlight the year-round program that has flown more than 2.2 million young people since its introduction in 1992. We are in many ways making International Young Eagles Day the restart point for the Young Eagles program after the COVID pandemic put most flights on hiatus for the past year, said Jack J. Pelton, EAA CEO and chairman of the board. Also expected to participate are both Young Eagles program co-chairman, air show legend Sean D. Tucker, and NFL tight end Jimmy Graham, who are both avid pilots. An EAA Young Eagles flight pairs a young person with a certificated pilot. After a pre-flight session that explains the parts of the airplane and how pilots prepare to fly safely each time, a brief 15 to 20 minute introductory flight provides a unique experience. Our last top story of this episode coming right up. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. The U.S. Space Command confirmed the Chinese Long March 5B re-entered over the Arabian Peninsula at approximately 10.15 p.m. on May 8th. It is unknown, however, if the debris impacted land or water. U.S. Spacecom does not conduct direct notifications to individual governments. Heavily involved in this bit of space drama, 
the 18th SPCS at Vanderburg Air Force Base in California is tasked with providing 24-7 support to the space surveillance network. It tracks more than 27,000 man-made objects in space. On the other hand, regardless of the lack of reported damage, no one seems pleased with China's careless approach to launching large hardware assemblies. NASA Administrator Senator Bill Nelson released a statement Saturday regarding the debris from the Chinese Long March 5B rocket. Spacefaring nations must minimize the risks to people and property on Earth of re-entries of space objects and maximize transparency regarding those operations. It is clear that China is failing to meet responsible standards regarding their space debris. It is critical that China and all space-faring nations and commercial entities act responsibly and transparently in space to ensure the safety, stability, security, and long-term sustainability of outer space activities. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.